Greetings aspirants. Welcome to the Hindu newspaper analysis brought to you by Shankar IAS Academy for the date 18th of July 2022. So displayed here are the list of news articles that we are going to discuss today. After discussing the news articles, we will be seeing some of the preliminary practice questions. And I have a quiz question for you to answer. You can either answer the question in the comment section or I will post a poll in the community. You can also answer there. So I will mention the correct answer in both the comment section and in the poll comment section. So now without wasting much time, let's get into the news article discussion. Now look at this first news article. See this news article is with respect to submarine called INS Sindhudwaj. The article states that yesterday INS Sindhudwaj was decommissioned from service at Vishakhapatnam after 35 years in service. So in this context, we will be briefly discussing about Sindhudwaj from prelims perspective. Remember the submarine is decommissioned. It is not commissioned. So after 35 years in service, the submarine is decommissioned from service now. So this is the news article. So firstly, we shall understand what is this submarine. See, submarine is a naval vessel that is capable of propelling itself beneath the water as well as on the surface of the water. That is, it can move underwater as well as over the water. Basically, submarines are of two types. One is conventional and the other is nuclear. See, the main difference between the conventional submarine and the nuclear submarine is the power generation system. Know that nuclear submarines employ nuclear reactors for power generation and conventional submarines, they use diesel electric engines. Also remember, nuclear powered submarines are generally used for deep sea operations while the conventional diesel electric submarines are generally used for coastal defense and operations close to the shore. So now, with this brief idea, we shall explore about Sindh Ghosh class submarines. See, Sindh Ghosh class submarines are the Kilo class diesel electric submarines. Here, Kilo is just a name given for a class of diesel electric attack submarines originally designed and built in the Soviet Union in 1970s. These submarines use diesel electric engines. So, as we saw earlier, these submarines are conventional submarines. They were built under a contract between Roswazen of Russia and the Ministry of Defense. These submarines have a displacement of 3000 tons, a maximum diving depth of 300 meters, top speed of 18 knots and are able to operate solo for 45 days with a crew of 53. So if you are wondering why are we discussing about Sindhu Ghosh? is because INS Sindhudwaj was a Sindhu Ghosh class submarine of the Indian Navy. That's why we are discussing about it. See, INS Sindhudwaj is significant because she had many firsts to her credit. It includes operationalization of the indigenized sonar US HUS and indigenized satellite communication system Rukmani. It also operated an indigenous torpedo fire control system and also remember the Sindhudwaj successfully undertook mating and personal transfer with deep submergence rescue vessel. Know that it was the only submarine to be awarded a chief of naval staff that is CNS rolling trophy for innovation by Prime Minister Narendra Modi. So that's all you have to know about this news article discussion. So, in this news article discussion, we saw that submarine is a naval vessel that is capable of propelling itself beneath the water as well as on the water's surface. There are basically two types of submarines. One is conventional and the other is nuclear. Conventional uses diesel electric engines while the nuclear submarines, they employ nuclear reactors for power generation. Then we saw about Shindugo's class submarines. They are conventional submarines meaning they use diesel electric engines. They have a displacement of 3000 tons, a maximum diving depth of 300 meters, top speed of 18 knots and are able to operate solo for 45 days with a crew of 53. So with these learned points, now let us move on to the next news article discussion. Now look at this news article. This news article talks about the monsoon session of the parliament. See the session is going to begin on Monday, that is why it is on news. 
In this session, the opposition has decided to raise issues such as the controversial Agnipath scheme, then the inflation, alleged misuse of investigating agencies to target opposition leaders, and unemployment. So, this monsoon session is expected to be stormy. Also, note that the presidential and vice presidential election will take place during this session. So, this is the crux of the news article given here. In this context, let us see some of the important facts about sessions of parliament. See, knowing this is very important because there might be a question in preliminary examination regarding this. So, let us start with sessions in parliament. See, it is the president who summons each house of parliament to meet from time to time. So, the president from time to time, he summons each house of parliament to meet. Remember, parliament should meet at least twice a year because the maximum gap between two sessions cannot be more than six months. So, this is as per Article 85 of Indian Constitution. Note this matter. Remember, there are usually three sessions of parliament in a year. One is budget session, which is held in the period from February to May. Then there is monsoon session, which is usually held in the period July to September. Then there is winter session, which is held in the months of November and December. So this month is July and the monsoon session is going to begin on Monday. So that is why this article made news today. So now coming back, when we say a session of parliament, it refers to the period spanning between the first sitting of the house in a session and its prorogation. So, the time or the period between the first setting of the house in a session to its prorogation. This period is called session of parliament. So, when we say recess, it refers to the period spanning between the prorogation of a house and its reassembly in a new session. So, now let us see some of the terms that are associated with session of parliament. They are adjournment, adjournment sinde, prorogation, dissolution and quorum. So now we'll discuss each of these terms. See, a session of parliament has many meetings. Each meeting in a day consists of two sittings. A sitting of a parliament can be terminated by adjournment. So adjournment is defined as termination of the seating of the house. Remember, only the seating of the house is terminated during adjournment. After the termination of the seating, the house meets again at the time appointed for the next seating. Now let us see about adjournment sinde. See, it refers to termination of a seating of the house without any definite date being fixed for the next seating. So that we call as adjournment sinde. The power of both adjournment and adjournment sinde lies with the preceding officer of the house. Now coming to prorogation, it refers to termination of a session of the house by an order made by the president. See, before in both adjournment and adjournment sinde, only the seating of the house is terminated. If the seating of the house is terminated and the house meets again at the time appointed for the next seating, it is called adjournment. And if there is termination of a seating of the house without any definite date being fixed for the next seating, it is called adjournment sinde. But here, in prorogation, there is termination of a session of the house. And this is done by an order made by the president. So it is not done by the presiding officer, but by the president of India. So now let us come to dissolution. See, as you know, only Lok Sabha is subjected to dissolution. Since Rajya Sabha is a permanent house, it is not subjected to dissolution. So while the prorogation terminates a session of Lok Sabha, dissolution terminates the life of existing Lok Sabha. Hope you can understand the difference. So, what happens after the dissolution? The general election are held and new Lok Sabha is constituted. So, now let us see about quorum of the house. See, it refers to the minimum number of members required to be present in the house so that the house can transact any business. So, article 100 deals with the quorum of the house. See, as per the article, the quorum to constitute a meeting of either house of parliament shall be one-tenth of the total number of members of the house. So, if there is no quorum at any time during a meeting, it shall be duty of the chairman or speaker either to adjourn the house or to suspend the meeting until there is a quorum. So, this is with respect to article 100. So, because of this article only, knowing about quorum is very important. 
So these are some of the informations on terms pertaining to the sessions of the parliament. In this we saw about sessions of parliament. There are three sessions. One is budget session which is held in the period from February to May. Then comes the monsoon session which is usually held in the period between July to September. Then comes winter session which is held in the months of November and December. The parliament should meet at least twice a year because the maximum gap between two sessions cannot be more than six months. So this is as per Article 85 of the Indian Constitution. Then we saw about some of the terms associated with sessions of parliament. We saw about adjournment, adjournment in day, prorogation, dissolution and quorum. Adjournment is termination of a seating and the house meets again at the time appointed for the next seating. Adjournment in day means there will be termination of a seating of the house without any definite time being fixed for the next seating. Prorogation means termination of a session of the house by an order made by the president. Then comes the dissolution. Only Lok Sabha is subjected to dissolution. After dissolution, general elections are held and new Lok Sabha is constituted. Then we saw about quorum. Quorum means minimum number of members required to be present in the house so that the house can transact any business. As per article 100, parliament shall have one tenth of the total members of the house to have quorum. So these are some of the points that you have to remember about sessions of parliament, very important topic, make note of it. So with these learned points, now let us move on to the next news article discussion. Now let us take up this news article for our next discussion. See this news article talks about DFSL that is the Directorate of Forensic Science Laboratory. Now if you are wondering why this is a news, see a Mumbai court recently sentenced a 45 year old man to death for raping and murdering a 32 year old woman in Sakinaka. And for this judgment the court relied on a gate analysis report furnished by the police. So this is for the first time in the country a gate analysis report is used for judgment. So here a gate analysis is a process where a person's manner of working is compared with CCTV footage of the accused. So the lab behind the gate report is the Directorate of Forensic Science Laboratory that is DFSL. This is why the laboratory made the news today. So in this backdrop, let us understand some of the important facts about DFSL. See, every police station should be equipped with investigation kits and every subdivision should have a mobile forensic science laboratory. This is one among the recommendations given by Batman Abaya Committee on Police Reforms. So there is no doubt that forensic science laboratories play a vital role in resolving all civil and criminal cases. So here forensic science is nothing but the application of science and technology to the detection and investigation of crime. So what are the functions of forensic science laboratories? See the main function of forensic science laboratory is to provide an unbiased scientific opinion on the different types of evidential materials referred to them by the investigating agencies. So this in turn will help the judiciary. So this is one of the main function of forensic science laboratories. Now these evidence they act as mute witnesses against the perpetrators. Apart from this a forensic scientist can also help police in the collection of the right evidence material from the scene of the crime during the investigation. So the forensic scientist form indispensable scientific advisor to the investigation team. And their professionalism ensures that the independency and integrity of findings are in no way compromised by actual involvement in the process. So realizing these advantages, the Forensic Science Laboratory in Mumbai was first established in 1958. It also has seven regional forensic science laboratories that is RFSLs at Nagpur, Pune, Aurangabad, Nasik, Amravati, Nandet and Kolhapur. And it has five mini forensic science laboratories. Today the directorate of forensic science laboratory in Maharashtra is a multidisciplinary organization which is well equipped with extremely specialized and rationalized infrastructure of international standards. 
For example, reports from DFSL were used in many high-profile cases, including the 1993 serial bomb blast in uh, Bombay, which killed around 260 people and injured 1,400. then cases related to the 2006 train blast and 2011 serial blast in mumbai then the 2010 german bakery blast in pune and even the 26 by 11 terrorist attacks had forensic evidence from dfsl so one speciality about this office is the dfsl office at santa cruz kalina has five divisions which includes toxicology biology dna general analytical and instrumentation so their area of expertise cover the full gamut of forensic science including narcotics and explosives prohibition and exercise ballistics physics tape authentication speaker identification cyber forensic and even psychology and apart from this sources say that the dfsl's cyber forensic department identifies which digital media that is the mobile or credit card or hard drives is present at the scene of the case and seizes the media so in the laboratory the team makes a duplicate copy of the media authenticates it identifies and analyzes its integrity using latest technology and they present the report in a sealed envelope to the police and this evidence help the police to prove a crime so this is how dfsl is helping us in delivering speedy judgments so we are learning this because reducing crime rate is very important in a society and to reduce the crime rate there must be proper specialized infrastructure to prove the crime so in my opinion only when the punishments are increased the crime rate will decrease and for that dfsl helps the judiciary effectively and we saw how in this news article discussion so in this news article discussion we saw about dfsl and some of its significance with respect to forensic science So with these learned points now let us move on to the next news article discussion. Take a look at this news article. It talks about the famous Sri Ujjaini Mahakali Bonalu celebrations. In the event of this festival all roads leading to the Ujjaini Mahakali temple were decorated with festoons, streamers and colorful led lights. So this is the background of the news article given here. So in this context let us know about this Bonalu festival. See Bonalu is a Hindu festival in this festival goddess Mahakali is worshiped it is an annual festival celebrated so where it is celebrated see it is celebrated in Kamaredi district and twin cities Hyderabad Secunderabad and other parts of Telangana state in India see Bonalu is celebrated usually during Asda masam that falls in July or August Special pujas are performed for goddess Ellamma during the first and last day of the festival. The festival is considered as a form of thanksgiving to the goddess after the fulfillment of vows. Bonam is an offering made to the mother goddess. Bonam literally means meal in Telugu. So the women folk in household they prepare rice that is cooked along with milk jaggery in a new earthen or brass pot. This pot is adorned with neem leaves, turmeric and vermilion. Then the women they carry this pot on their hands and make an offering of bonam to the mother goddess at temple. In addition to this bonam they also offer bangles and sari. See Bonalu involves worship of Kali in her various forms. Now let us see the origin of Bonalu festival. See the festival history reportedly started in 1813 in the region of Hyderabad and Secunderabad. This is when plague disease had broke out in twin cities that had claimed thousands of lives. A military battalion from Hyderabad was then deployed to Ujjain and concerned about the plague menace in Hyderabad. The military battalion offered prayers to Mother Goddess at Mahakali Temple in Ujjain, Madhya Pradesh. The prayer is that if people get relieved from the epidemic they would be installing the idol of Mahakali back in Secunderabad. It is believed by devotees that Mahakali halted the spread of the disease while the military battalion came back here and installed an idol. 
and they offered bonalu to mother mahakali remember potturaju dances to the resounding drums and dances close to palaharam bandi the procession he is considered the brother of mother goddess and lastly let us see about the festival attires see on this special occasion women dress up in the traditional sari jewels and other accessories teenage girls wear half sari or lehenga choli and ornaments to bring out the traditional grace of the attire so that's all you have to know about this news article discussion in this news article discussion we saw about bonalu celebration it is celebrated in kamareddy district and twin cities that is hyderabad and secunderabad and other parts of telangana state in india so these learned points now let us move on to the next part of the news article discussion that is the preliminary practice questions now look at this first question this question is about sessions of the parliament with reference to sessions of the parliament consider the following statements statement 1 president can end a session of the house statement 2 dissolution of rajya sabha ends the ongoing session of it which of the statements given above is or or correct option a one only option b two only option c both one and two and option d neither one nor two see the correct answer for the question is option a one only with reference to sessions of the parliament the president can only end a session of the house so this is done through prorogation this we saw in our news article discussion it's a right so this statement is correct now second statement is incorrect because only lok sabha can be dissolved rajya sabha's ongoing session can be ended by adjournment or adjournment sine die or through prorogation so it is not applicable to rajya sabha and that is why second statement is incorrect so the correct answer for the question is option a one only now moving on to the second question this question is about the bonalu festival here three pairs are given on the left side the states are given and the right side festivals are given you have to tell how many pairs are correctly matched so pair 1 assam bihu pair 2 telangana loser pair 3 kerala samakka saralamma jatra so how many pairs given above or correctly matched you have to find that option a only one pair option b only two pair option c all the three pairs and option d none of the above see the correct answer for the question is option a only one pair because pair 1 is alone correctly matched see people of assam irrespective of caste and creed they celebrate three bihus all these three bihus are connected with each other first is called bohag bihu it is celebrated in mid april second in line is mag bihu which is observed in mid january and the third one is kati bihu which is commemorated in mid october so here bohang bihu heralds the coming of the new year in the assamese calendar then mag bihu is basically related with agriculture it is observed when the paddy crop is harvested kati bihu is celebrated on the last day of the ahin month of assamese calendar on this day people perform rituals in the midst of paddy fields to wish for good paddy crop so this pair is correct now moving on to the second pair second pair is incorrect because loser festival it belongs to arunachal pradesh it is one of the most significant festival of the buddhist community in tawang and loser commemorates the advent of the new year the word loser is derived from two tibetan words lo which means year and sir which means new i hope now you can remember this festival loser so this pair is incorrect and moving on to the third pair samakka saralama jatra it is held by forest dwelling koya tribes of telangana and surrounding states so this is the biggest tribal festival in asia which is attended by 1 crore people on an average the event is held by annually to honor the twin goddesses samakka and her daughter saralama several communities in telangana society support jatra as it is also a mythical narrative of two tribal women leaders who fought against the kakatiya rulers who tried to annex their land and forest so according to myth it was samakas curse which caused gradual decline and death of kakatiya rule 
So this third pair is also incorrect. So the correct answer for the question is option A only one pair. So now moving on, this question about INS Sindhutwaj is the quiz question for you today. This is a very simple question. If you had listened to the session correctly, you can easily answer for this question. You can comment the correct answer either in the poll or in the video's comment section. So with this, we came to the end of the Hindu newspaper analysis. I hope the news articles discussed today will be very helpful for you. If you like the video, hit like, do comment and don't forget to subscribe to Shankarai's Academy YouTube channel. Thank you.